Hey, sweethearts, it's Rowan, and, uh, I'm very happy because I finally was able to get a bottle of lighter fluid so that I could make this one work. And, of course, come the fuck on. There we go. Uh, you know, I should do a video featuring all of my functional antiques and, you know, vintage appliances and whatnot around here. But that's not today. Today, as I promised, ah, uh, in some previous video. <laughs> so in some previous video, I promised a story that I have, that I referred to as the stick that saved Christmas. And because this should be posting in the early a.m. hours of Christmas Eve uh, 2018 thereabouts. So, the stick that saved Christmas. This is, this, this is a story about my younger sister. Another one about my younger sister. And how the girl just wasn't right. <laughs> and so, uh, so some background on the stick. <laughs> uh, first off, um, as I have said many times before, I grew up in a Catholic household. My father's, uh, side was Irish American, my mother's side, um, her mother was English, her father was Cornish, uh, with some, um, with some Russian in there as well. You know, we grew up Catholic, and... Um, we grew up Catholic, and if you have seen the sitcom that is currently on ABC, uh, television in the United States, not the Australian ABC, um, uh, I don't know the schedule very well because I watch all of my new, well, almost all of my new sitcoms on Hulu the next day, yeah. so I don't know if it's just before or just after, uh, The Connors which is currently ABC's highest-rated sitcom, so somebody with scheduling really believes, you know, in this show and really wants it to, ser to be a success. It's called The Kids Are Alright, and it is, to my understanding, loosely based on somebody's real-life experiences from growing up in an Irish Catholic family household in the 1970s. And honestly, with the exception of some political... Um, stuff going on, there's not a significant difference between what's portrayed on this show and growing up in the 80s, um, you know, <laughs> uh, because, um, you know, it's just a 10-year difference for the most part. So, um, the, uh, the Christmas episode for 2018, Hi Cats, uh, the Christmas episode for 2018, uh, the, uh, the narrator character who I believe is, like, one of the sons in the middle, there's, it's about, like, a family with, like, eight boys or something, um, eight kids, all boys, and I am from a much smaller family, um, four, four kids, I've got three sisters, I'm the only boy, but that's another story for another time. And, uh, so he was describing that, you know, at the beginning of the episode that in their household, um, hi, uh, Christmas was where you got some combination of practical and or handmade gifts. And this was very true in my household as well. Um, so I guess that's just a very prevalent practice. Um, you know, you would sometimes, or at least, you know, my family, we would, you know, if it was a really good year economically, and this was the Reagan era, so, you know, there were, there were very few good economic times. Um, we would get, like, one, like, really nice, fancy, you know, store-bought, you know, toy or gift, but, you know, even if it was, you know, um... But, you know, for the most part, you know, like, you know, Santa went to, Santa went to Grandma's house. Santa, you know, didn't come to our house. <laughs> um, you know, with the exception of, you know, socks and underwear and, you know, then handmade stuff from the rest of the family. So, now that you have the background that I've rambled on about ad nauseum, um, <laughs> and I'm picking these up for a reason, don't, don't, um... 
trust me, there's a reason that I've picked up these, uh, um, these little crystal light flavor tubes for my bottled water. So, um, so yeah, it was the year that my younger sister was in kindergarten, and I was in second grade, because we were about a year and a half apart, and I can't remember if my, uh, if my eldest sister, who would be my sister from my mother's side, well, half-sister from my mother's side, I can't remember if she had, uh, come home to visit for Christmas that year or not, um... They wouldn't have gone, she and my brother-in-law would not have gone to, uh, to Hong Kong to see his family, because they don't really do Christmas there. They, where was I going? Right. Um, so yeah, let's just say Nick and Chan were over for Christmas. So, you know, we're there, and we're sitting around the tree, and we've just, you know, my younger sister and I have just finally succeeded in waking the parents up, and, you know, the older sisters are all just like, Ugh. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> this is yeah. The 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 little ones aren't going to go back to bed. Mom, Dad, just get out of the bed and <laughs> um and everything. And uh, so we've we've rustled our parents down, and they're downstairs, and we're all sitting around the tree, and we get to the point where we're ex you know where you know uh, Molly and I are giving our parents the gifts that we made in school. The whole like two weeks before, um, before winter break. Um, now, at my Catholic school, and I went to a very tiny Catholic school, uh, we usually had an arts and crafts, uh, day, um, especially the lower elementary, so like fourth grade to kindergarten, because it was K, K through eight at that school. Uh, so fourth grade through kindergarten, or down through kindergarten, so kindergarten through fourth grade especially, we, um, uh, we had at least one arts and crafts day a week, but then December, and it would sometimes be two, sometimes three days a week, we'd have arts and crafts days where we would just make stuff for family members for presents. And I'm not joking about that. So, um, so yeah, especially in the 80s, in that part of Toledo, Ohio, you know, and we're Catholics, and a good two-thirds to three-quarters of the school were there as a charity case. <laughs> including my family. So, um, so yeah, there was just, you know, we had just had a butt ton of arts and crafts days before, you know, winter break because you get to make crisps for your family. And so the, um, I don't even remember what I made for my parents or my sisters, but you know, we get around and we pass them all out and you know, you know, and, you know, Dad's like, oh, another ashtray. But, you know, he smoked six packs of unfiltered Chesterfields a day. I'm not joking. I am not joking. I mean, granted, the equivalent of a pack, sometimes a pack and a half a day, would be given away to his AA buddies because, sure. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, like, he would smoke the bulk of them himself. So, yeah, like, realistically, it would be, like, up to five he'd personally smoke, but that's another story for another time. Um, and there will be another story at another time. Um, you know, uh, so, uh, so then what? Then what? Um, uh, so then, Molly, so then it's Molly's turn to pass around the gifts that she made for everybody. Hi! Um, you know, she gives something to Dad, and it's a normal thing, you know, that he would get, like, I don't know, like an ashtray or some kind of thing to hang from his uh, truck window or, or mirror or any something like that. You know, our mother probably got something like quilted pot holders or something with those little loop looms that... I still see those sometimes in the uh, children's section at um, Joanne or Michael's or whatnot. Uh, I don't see them quite as much as I used to, but I still see them on occasion. The, you know, the, like you get the little fabric loops and you put them on a loom and then you weave them. Those things. Uh, I don't know if there's another name that they go by, but I call it a loop loom and describe it just now. You're going to know what I'm talking about. Um, um, our two older sisters probably got something in the area of macaroni jewelry or some kind of jewelry of some sort. Uh, probably something very lazily beaded because she's 
five. <laughs> and then she gets to giving me a gift. And I'm going to get my copy of uh, Get Lucky, um, which is the Kill Dr. Lucky card game um, by Cheap Ass Games. Now, this is not quite the size of a cigar box, but there we go. You get the effect. So she hands me something, you know, so she hands me a cigar box. And again, this is like maybe a tenth the size of a cigar box, but still, it's like, she gives me a cigar box that has been very lazily wrapped in Sunday comics, and, you know, and I pick it up, and I hear, or, so whatever is inside this cigar box is obviously much smaller than wrapping it in a cigar box would, you know, be appropriate to, and she hasn't even, like, you know, crunched up the rest of the Sunday comics and put them around the cigar box. She, you know, like, inside, around the gifts so that, you know, I don't hear that rattling when I shake it. And she gets this very excited look as, as I'm about to unwrap it. <sighs> like a five-year-old does when, you know, they're, they're trying to show you how excited they are. And I take and I open up the cigar box like you do a cigar box and not a card game. And inside the cigar box... Go over there, instructions. Um, inside the cigar box, I take out not little um, flavor tubes for the hot water, but... Not, this isn't hot water for the bottled water, but inside is popsicle sticks. Not flavor tubes. It's popsicle sticks. About four or five of them glued together, I told you the visual aid would work, glued together like this, so that it would form one thick popsicle stick. And on one end of the popsicle stick, you know, the, the big extra thick popsicle stick, is a happy face sticker. And this is very lazily glued. Like, there's, like, you know, dried glue drippings all up on the sides, especially. Like, she managed to get the, the ends a little bit neater, but the sides, it's like, it's all, like caked up Elmer's, you know, that's dried clear, and I pick it up, and I say, what is it? And she looks, oh, it's a stick! I made it for you! And I'm looking at it, and I'm seven, so I have no tact, and I say, but it's stupid. And I like my present! And, <laughs> and the rest of the family just looks stunned. Just stunned. Like, everything, everything that's built up. Like, even the way that it's like, it's a stick! I made it for you! Like, like this was some kind of joke that I would have understood somehow. Or, or something. Like, this was... I don't understand. Nobody understood. Literally none of us understood. And, you know, my, my father looked at my mother like... And my mother looked at my dad like... Like... Like, none of them knew how to proceed here. Neither of them knew how to proceed here. Like, like on one hand, you could see the gears turning. Like, like they wanted to, you know, somehow punish me or, you know, or reprimand me in some way for saying something mean and impolite to my younger sister. But at the same time, everybody else in the room agreed with me that the stick was stupid. And, if anything else, that pretty much taught us that, there, that everybody, you know, everybody else in the room had already, had just now, at that point, learned what I'd suspected for some time in my then seven years, that there was something wrong with my younger sister. And we're still not sure what all was wrong with my younger sister, but, but you know, it, it, it was a stick and it was stupid, but somehow it brought the family together in realizing that there was something wrong with my younger sister. 
And that's about all I have for today. And I am on Wednesday going to be reading. I'm going to, I don't know, look up something on my books behind the chair. And I'm going to be reading from the chair, as I often do. And it's probably not going to be Chuck Tingle this month. But there we go. That's, that's my story. And, uh, if you have celebrated the solstice, as have I, I hope you had a good one. If you celebrate Christmas, or will at least be, um, participating in your family's celebration of Christmas, I hope it is a merry one to you and yours. And that's about it. So, bats and kisses, sweethearts, and I love you all so much, and goodbye.